Pivot table is one of the most useful functions in Excel. It does all the manual work, allowing you to skip directly to the data analysis. This video is part of our People Analytics Certificate Program, and it will show you how to use Pivot Table for the most common HR requests. Before we start, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell. Let's dive in. Today, you will learn about another famous, or perhaps infamous, Excel function. Pivot tables. If you're anything like me when I first started using Excel, the mere thought of using a pivot table probably fills you with fear and dread. At the beginning of my data analysis journey, I went to great lengths to avoid using pivot tables as much as possible. But once I started using them, I soon learned that pivot tables are a great tool to help you better understand your data. Pivot tables help you summarize and explore large data sets in seconds. Understanding how pivot tables work will prepare you really well for any reporting you'll need to do in or outside of Excel. Let's go into Excel to answer Linda's first question about the gender distribution in the company using pivot tables. Now, select any cell in the table, click Insert, and click Pivot Table and select from Table Range. You'll see a pop-up box with the table range selected and a choice of where to place the pivot table. It is always best to insert your pivot table on a new worksheet. Check the settings and click OK. You can rename the sheet Question 1 to avoid confusion later on by right-clicking the worksheet and hitting Rename. Let's take a look at what we have here. You'll see the pivot table fields. These are the columns in your data. There are four pivot table areas to drag and drop these fields to create a data table. Rows, values, columns, and filters. Let's start by creating a table to establish the current headcount for every region, as well as the organization as a whole. This allows you to answer question one and two. You typically start with rows when building your pivot table. Select and drag the region field into the rows area. Now, the five unique regions are displayed in the rows of the pivot table. The values area is the data you want to summarize. In your case, this is the number of employees in each region. So you can use ID as the values here. Drag the ID field into the values area. Another column is added to your table. But be careful here, because Excel automatically sums the numerical ID values for each region. Instead, you want to count up the number of employees. To do this, click on Sum of ID in the Values Area field and on the drop-down menu, followed by Value Field Settings. A list of different functions appear, including Sum, Count, Average, Maximum, and Minimum. Select Count and click OK. Your values are adjusted to show the number of employees in each region. Looking at the data, you can see that the Western region currently has the highest headcount at 185 employees in total, and the Northeast region currently has the lowest headcount with 135 employees in total. But this is not what we're looking for. The first question is, what is the overall gender distribution in the company? So let's add the gender distribution to the pivot table. Add gender to the columns area. You get the number of people per gender in total and for each region. From the table, you can see that the organization currently employs more men than women. This answers the first question. The second question is, how many more men than women are employed in the West region? You can see that in the West, there are 126 men, which is more than double the number of women which is 59. Let's now answer Linda's third question about the gender distribution per age group. To visualize this, we need to create a new pivot table. Go to your master table sheet, click insert, and create a new pivot table. Let's call this worksheet question three. Again, we add ID to the values and select the count of ID. 
to examine the current age distribution in the organization, add age as a field in the rows area. What do you get? Doing this makes it messy and difficult to find information quickly. You can improve the table layout by moving the fields around. To group ages into specific ranges, right-click on any cell in the pivot table. We'll use cell A6. Click on Group in the drop-down menu and a dialog box will appear with Starting At, Ending At and By fields. In the current data, the lowest value is 90 and the highest is 65. You can set any interval that makes sense for your analysis by changing these fields. For now, use the automatic settings. You can decide to create a different range, but let's use this one because it creates even groups. Now, your data should be grouped neatly into five age intervals, starting with 19 to 28, where there are 105, and ending with 59 to 68, where there are 65. If you add gender as a column, you can view the age breakdown by gender to see the number of men and women that fall within specific age ranges. This nicely summarizes the gender distribution for different age ranges. The 19 to 28 age group has 42 women and 63 men. The 29 to 38 age group has 103 women and 109 men. And the list goes on. This begins to answer Linda's third question. But you're not there yet. Although you have the absolute numbers here, Presenting them in percentages makes gender distribution more clear. There are two ways you can do this. One is by manually calculating the percentages, but in Excel, there's usually a faster and more efficient way to perform manual actions. Here's how. When you right-click on a value in your table, you see a pop-up menu with options to sort data, remove certain fields, summarize values by different dimensions, and perform many other actions. On this menu, you'll also see Show Values As. You can use this to change how you present your data. For instance, right-click on the cell in the grand total column for the 29 to 38 age group, which is 212. Go to Show Values As. Click on percentage of grand total and your data is transformed into percentages of the grand total amount of 797. You can select and format your data to remove the decimal points. Select your percentage data and in the home tab in the format section, press the decrease decimal button until you see the desired number of decimals. Now, in the grand total column of your pivot table, you can now see what percentage of your total workforce falls within each age range. This answers Linda's third question in a more clear way. Next, Linda was also interested in the gender distribution per region. You can report this using your pivot table as well. Remove the age field from rows and add the region to rows. As you can see, the percentage data looks distorted. Can you guess why this is? It's because you selected the values to be displayed as percentages of the grand total. To change this back, you can right-click on one of the values and go to Show Values As, and then click on Percentage of Row Total. This way, the number of women and men per region will add up to 100%. You can even stack rows here. For example, drag age back into the rows area. Now, for each region, you see the age distribution from earlier with the percentage of men and women for each age group. This way, you can mix and match all of the different variables in your data set. There is so much more you can do than I can show you in this course, so feel free to experiment. Linda's final question was about gender distribution in the sales department management team. This is a very specific data point, so you'll find it by applying some filters. 
Let's first clean up our pivot table by removing the edge field from the rows area. You now have region in the rows area and gender in the columns. Select a percentage value in your pivot table. Let's select the grind total value for the Midwest, 100%. Go to show values as and click on no calculation. Let's display the data for managers and non-managers. Drag the manager field into the filters area. Now, at the top of the report, you will see a drop-down menu. Click on it and select Yes to display data for all managers. From this table, you can see the gender distribution of managers in different regions. There are more men than women, with men being overrepresented in the southeast and west region. To answer Linda's final question, you need to add another filter to select the sales department. Drag the department field into the filter fields area. Go to the filter drop down menu in B2 and select sales. As you can see, the data has become even more granular. Now you can see the gender distribution for the sales department management team. You can find your answer in the grand total row. There are 10 women and 16 men. You now have the final answer for Linda's questions. And there you have it. In this video, you've learned how to apply a pivot table to your HR data needs. If you want to learn more about data analysis and how you can use it to make better people decisions, check out our People Analytics Certificate Program. You can find the link in the description below. See you next time. Thank you.